So anteriorly to the rectus abdominis muscle, we have the aponeurosis of external oblique, and posterior to rectus abdominis, we have the aponeurosis of transverse abdominis. So what happens to internal oblique? Well, the internal oblique muscle, as it approaches rectus abdominis, splits into two. So the aponeurosis of internal oblique splits into two lamina, an anterior lamina and a posterior lamina. So we have the anterior layer of internal oblique aponeurosis. Posteriorly, behind rectus abdominis, internal oblique sends a layer that goes behind rectus abdominis. So posterior, we have the posterior layer of internal oblique aponeurosis. So if we were to go from anterior to posterior, we'd find the aponeurosis of external oblique. We'd then find the anterior lamina, or the anterior layer of internal oblique. We'd then find rectus abdominis. Carrying on posterior, we'd then have the posterior lamina, or layer, of internal oblique. And then we'd have the aponeurosis of transversus abdominis. So effectively, we'd have one and a half anteriorly and one and a half posteriorly, where the two halves have come from internal oblique dividing. And then most posterior, we then have a fine layer, which is called transversalis fascia, and then we have the peritoneum. We'll explore those in later classes, in later lectures. So that's above the umbilicus. If we now go below the umbilicus, if we now go below the umbilicus, then this is a lot simpler. So previously we had the section above and now we've made a section below the umbilicus. So now we're concentrating on this one. Similar orientation of muscles. Here we've got rectus abdominis radiating around here. We're imagining that this is attaching to the posterior wall again. So a similar arrangement. But this time, the aponeurosis from all three anterolateral abdominal wall muscles all three, external oblique, internal oblique, transverse abdominis, runs anteriorly. Internal oblique doesn't split, and transverse abdominis aponeurosis passes anterior to rectus abdominis. So the only thing we have posterior to rectus abdominis is that membrane I spoke about, transversalis fascia, and then the peritoneum. We can see it here. External oblique, internal oblique, transverse abdominis. We can see that the aponeuroses from these muscles all pass anterior to rectus abdominis. So we can see that above and below the umbilicus, the rectus sheath is very different. Above it, internal oblique is divided. A lamina goes anterior and a lamina goes posterior. And below the umbilicus, all three aponeuroses pass anterior to rectus abdominis to then merge with the linear alba. So that's the rectus sheath. It's very, very important arrangement. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.